what are the deadliest diseases and what is it like to die from them? This video is going to cover what it's going to be like to live and die with end-stage Parkinson's disease. So Parkinson's disease coming onto hospice, you are going to be coming on at very, very late stages of Parkinson's disease. There are five stages of Parkinson's disease, and if you're coming onto hospice, you are at stage five. It is a terminal life-limiting illness, but you do live for quite a long time with Parkinson's disease. The decline is like a staircase, not like a sharp decline like some cancer diagnoses can give you. So before we get into end stage, which is when I see most of my patients, let's just generally talk about stages one through four. Generally speaking, when you have Parkinson's disease, what you're first going to notice is unsteady gait kind of shifting when you walk. It'll be harder for you to do functional things. You'll notice tremors. It will start um, in affecting your thought process and your speech. One of the telling signs of Parkinson's, which many people get confused by, is people will actually start having hallucinations or delusions. So not everyone, but many people with Parkinson's disease will start seeing things or believing things, having paranoia, having delusions. Those are fixable with medications. And once you can learn about them, and understand a lot of people can tell that they are having hallucinations that the things they're seeing aren't really real but that is a very defining symptom of Parkinson's disease that happens in the earlier stages. Stage five in Parkinson's disease. This is when a lot of people come onto hospice and how I see most of my Parkinson's patients. They look a lot like patients with dementia. It almost looks exactly the same. So they are usually bed bound. They usually are full assistance for ADLs, meaning their families or their caregivers are, are doing everything for them, cleaning them, changing them, feeding them. They are usually nonverbal. This depends, but most of the time people with end-stage Parkinson's disease are nonverbal and do have similar affect of someone with dementia. So do people actually die from Parkinson's? We would say they die from symptoms of Parkinson's disease. So they usually end up having something like aspiration pneumonia because swallowing becomes very difficult and they have to be fed. So a lot of people with Parkinson's disease end stage will get an aspiration pneumonia pneumonia and they could die from complications of that. Other complications are severe falls. They can have skin breakdown where they get an infection. They can get a urinary tract infection, which can cause severe infection. So a lot of times people with end stage Parkinson's disease can die from infection. End stage Parkinson's can also just gradually make someone not be able to swallow, right? So the natural thing to do, especially if you're on hospice, is to not force feed them, just like someone with dementia. So they can slowly shut down due to not being able to get food and water. Now, are they starving? Absolutely not. But people who are loving them and trying to care for them, that is their number one fear. I see this with Parkinson's and I see, see this with dementia. In general, what do I always say? I always say our bodies know how to die. So if your loved one is at an end stage Parkinson's disease and is slowly being unable to eat and drink or refusing to by shutting their mouth and not opening, let their body be the guide because our bodies know what's going on. Our bodies will start shutting down the mechanisms in the brain to make us hungry and thirsty. So they actually don't want to eat and drink. Their calcium levels will go up, so they'll sleep all the time. And as long as we keep our loved ones with Parkinson's end stage, clean, safe, and comfortable, they should die very peacefully. So complications that you're going to likely see with Parkinson's disease will be aspiration pneumonia, UTIs, which is urinary tract infections, which can turn into sepsis, which is a blood infection, and wounds. How can you prevent those things? Wounds, it can be tough. Sometimes when your albumin's low, when your nutrition's low, you can take care of someone so well and they still will get wounds. So know that please. But to prevent this will just be to keep them clean and safe and dry as best as possible and turn them while they're in bed as best as possible. In the hospital, they do it every two hours, a little excessive for home care. So, you know, every few hours, if you can turn them off their bony prominence, that will help um, in preventing wounds. So urinary tract infection, again, just keeping them clean, 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 safe, and as dry as possible. So if you notice their briefs are wet, make sure you change them as frequently as needed. The aspiration pneumonia, that you don't wanna force feed. So at the end of the day, 
People with Parkinson's disease, along with people with dementia, are going to lose the ability to swallow. It'll be very difficult for them to do so. So you don't want to force feed, you don't want to force them to drink. That's going to cause aspiration pneumonia. You let their body be the guide and let the natural progression of end of life take place. And lastly, the one complication that's the most difficult that I see with Parkinson's disease end stage, not always, but sometimes, just like dementia, is terminal agitation. How do we deal with that on hospice? Usually medication, the non-medical route would be just to decrease stimuli, make the room a little dark, maybe soft, nice music, decrease stimuli, rub their hands, you know, soothing sounds. That may help. If it doesn't help, we may have to medicate, and medication usually does do the trick to help with terminal agitation. So I hope this video helps answer some of your questions, decreases your fear, and helps you prepare and know what to expect with Parkinson's disease. Let me know what disease you'd like for me to cover next, and don't forget to like and subscribe for more death and dying information.